Okay, so I was asked um, a great question, and if all my thoughts are meaningless, um, and how that relates to, um, I'm only subject to what I, you know, I'm only subject to the thoughts that I'm holding in mind, and what's expressing, and I'm an infinite being. Well, the thing is, um, one of the first lessons in A Course in Miracles is all my thoughts are meaningless. Um, and this is the thing, and uh, from a mystical point of view, it's like, and there's also another thing which one of my spiritual teachers says, uh, who's A Course in Miracles teacher, that uh, uh, I'm subject to the thoughts I hold in mind. So you could say from A Course in Miracles perspective, what's showing up in my, in my life is to, some, to a large extent or to some extent related to the thoughts that I'm holding in my mind. So when I have situations, both good and bad, that are showing up in my life, it's because those thoughts are residing within my personal ego. Both the good stuff and the bad stuff, as my ego projects that they're good or bad, uh, is showing up. So it's not, it, it tends to be that. I mean, it, it can be more co complicated when you look into the collective ego and how everything is interacting with each other. But, um, so, just from a point of view, so if I like hold something in mind, like if I hold, I want to go to, uh, let's say I want to go to Spain, you know, if I hold that thought in mind, you know, I may end up in Spain at some point, you know, it just uh, is, is a thing. Um, now, all my, the thing of, um, now, I'm, a, you know, I say I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. So I would experience my true essential truth, my infinite being or the infinite source of love and peace within myself if I was not holding any thoughts in mind which were meaningful. Yeah, because the only thoughts that I, uh, this is, I'm going to go to quite an advanced level. The only thoughts that I perceive in my environment are the thoughts are the thoughts which have meaning. Otherwise, I don't perceive them. They disappear from me. So, for example, if, uh, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a uh, food addict. So, I used to be very interested in donuts. So, I use this one quite a lot. But if I, if donuts are meaningful to me, the image of donuts and the thoughts around donuts are meaningful to me, then they, I experience them in my, in my everyday life, you know. And if I was to make that donuts meaningless by doing the practical exercise in the Course of Miracles, like I put on a table a donut, and then I look at the donut for one second, I say it's meaningless. Then I look at the cup for one second, it's meaningless. I look at the light for a second, I keep doing that. That meaningful representation that my ego is holding, it's, got a, it's like a meaningful thought, it's a belief that that's important. That starts to disappear. And then when it's rendered totally meaningless, it's no longer within my ego. So even if there were donuts on the table, I would not, I would not register them. They would not exist for me. Yeah? So you could say on, a, on an esoteric level that what's showing up in my life are only the things which are meaningful. And I'd say that, that, that is the, that's how I see it. So if, if nothing was meaningful within my ego, I would, I would uh, transcend this world. I'd be back in that infinite place, the infinite place uh, prior, you know, so as I've shared, you know, I've had the white light spiritual experience. When you let stop tracking the world, you, you go back into the source, the source of infinite love and light. So, so having a meaningless, w making things in the world, both thoughts and people, places and situations meaningless, as one of the course members, is a way to release the ego, to let go, and then those things no longer sh uh, are identified with, and so they're not really experienced, especially not experienced from a dualistic point of view. When I say the word dualistic, what I mean is like there's a separate me experiencing an item or an object out there. So that starts to dissolve. When you start to go more into the oneness, uh, then things are not related in, a, in from a place of separation or duality, like I'm a separate person relating to this. They go more into the fields of the limitless oneness whereby it's realized that there is no separation. So that, that goes on to a more d deeper level. And so that, that would, so the thoughts that you hold in mind, which are strongly held in mind is a belief, and they tend to, to manifest. Like, also, uh, we can go into it. So 
if we want to go into into a bit more detail, you know, because uh, I was in. Yeah. Can I just ask? Yeah. So, in terms of all my thoughts are meaningless in, uh, of the course of the miracles, they're kind of saying all my thoughts that are ego driven, that are ego uh, related, are meaningless. No, all thoughts, all all thoughts, all thoughts are that have meaning are from the ego. Yeah, well, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. I mean, theoretically, okay, so when I'm identified with my thoughts and my body, yeah, when I'm identified with this thinking and this body, then I'm in separation. I believe I'm this body and these thoughts, yes? So I'm in the separated or dualistic experiencing. So all the thoughts create this separated experiencing of life. So if, um, if I release that, you know, so that there is no longer any, any experience of separation. For example, if I was in the witnesser of this body, the thoughts, this room, everything, then the um, then thoughts will not no longer be personal. You know, there will not be a me in this room. So there might still be things occurring in the room, but it's not. There is no me. So there might be thoughts. There might be interactions. There might be things happening. But there is no me, uh, an individual me relating. So you could say those are the thoughts of God, or that's the spontaneous arising or unfolding of, of what is happening. But there isn't a personal me there. So the, so the idea of meaningful thoughts can only happen if there's a, a belief in a separate identity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then, then, uh, then, so they're meaningful. The only the only thoughts that have meaning would be ego-based thoughts for the individual. So once you go into oneness, there is no individual left. So if there are thoughts arising, or if there's things being witnessed, then that's not, the, you could say those are arising out of the unfolding of the universe, but they're not re relating to anything from the individual, mm. you see. So, I mean, so sometimes you could say God's thoughts, or you could mm. say something else like that, but it wouldn't be a personal or ego-based thing, because in, the, in relation to the exercises in the Course of Miracles, we're letting go of the idea of the separate, the experience of the separated self. You know, we're dissolving that. So it's a practical exercise to make everything that the separated ego self finds meaningful, and that will dissolve you into the infinite, into the infinite being. So the infinite being is the one being. Yeah. So you know, like I say, I could say like I cancel my belief in, uh, I cancel my belief in. Um, asthma, like I had, I used to have asthma. I cancel my belief in asthma. I'm an infinite being because the only thing that sh why asthma shows up is for my separated ego believes in it. You know. So, yeah. so, so if I clear that belief and feel out my repressed feelings, mm -hmm. then I re I return to my original nature, which is the infinite oneness. You know. Because most illnesses, uh, aside from the karmic uh, yeah. ones, come from that exact. Uh, suppressing from that ego-based way of, uh, of acting uh, around that, so the suppressing feelings, all of that, the system of beliefs that show up in, in the body, being the body uh, just a puppet of the mind. Like, uh, right. That's right. I mean, you know, like uh, you could say, like, you know, if, if, you, if you see that the, the, the levels of ego inflation, you know, when you're in extreme ego inflation, like I was in extreme ego inflation, uh, when I got my kidney failure, so it's like you know using donuts to escape, using work to suppress. Um, so that's at a gross level when you're doing active addictions, you know, like ch chasing, chasing things in the outside world or overeating or that. That's an extreme or gambling or all those. Those are when there's extreme inflation to just repress all those dark feelings, the guilt, the shame, mm -hmm. uh, the negativity. So that's going on non-stop. So then, you know, that guilt uh, and that negativity then attracts unconsciously. It's an anti-life attractor field, which then attracts everything that's destructive. People, places, and situations, illnesses come. Yeah. All those things which are anti-life start to, to, to manifest in that yeah. field and are picked up. As you release those, but actually as you do a lot of spiritual work and release all of that, then you know you could say even when the ego is thinking, that's still a repression of the now. You know, just to have a indi sense of individuality and thinking is an escape from the eternal, because the ego is trying to sort of 
subtly escape through through thought identification yeah. the, the present moment. So in a way, yeah, the course really, <laughs> the course um, assumes that we're in ego really, that's why it starts off, yeah. you know, by saying, <laughs> uh, by saying that all thoughts are meaningless, obviously yeah. the or, course or, yeah. doesn't think that we are in oneness, obviously that's why. <laughs> no. no. I think that's kind of both. <laughs> I know. It is a course it's to, like a to get there. Really. It's a course to get there. I mean, okay. I mean the my, I mean like all my, me, if I'm, there's a yeah. me, then I have to be in separation, yeah. you know, and I think, uh, so all, all my, the, the me, otherwise there wouldn't be, it would not, not make sense. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah. all know that. It's 365 lessons to release, yeah. The, there's a part in the course, very interesting, uh, for understand which is ego and which is think of uh, God. Mm -hmm. It is the ever end, ever, uh, everlast, ever everlasting. Is I think it's something that can stop, like illness, like life, like death. Uh, is not of God. Is uh, yes. is a concept mm -hmm. uh, eternal. Yeah. Uh, is from God. It's yes. Very useful. So mm -hmm. you have to think in peace. Love. Mm. I, mean, I don't know. Yes, I yeah, totally yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah, all these are created. All the other things are yeah. ever finished. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I totally agree. All the illusions and yeah. the, the nightmares. If created you want to the... guide your thing, use these yeah. lines. I to mm. totally agree. Yeah, the, none of these exist in the infinite. It's not easy, but if you yes. <laughs> want, yeah. like uh, to go in the mountain and walk, uh, you understand you can do oh, all your life mm. because it's uh, very healthy, it's beautiful. And if you go, I don't know, playing with your mo your phone, it's not something you can do all your life. So finding something you can. Uh, see for a long, long, long time. It's good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's with you wherever you go as well. Yeah. That's the great thing. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put this.